Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be starting a new series where I teach you guys how to make your own mods. So if you end up liking this series and you want to see more of it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. So let's get right into today's lesson. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make things paintable that aren't normally paintable. We're going to be doing the logic gate and timer so that when you paint them, they light up the color that we paint just like this. Now I know this is nothing new that uh, I already offer this as an extra in some of the mods that I release on my channel, but developing these skills will help you on your way when you're going to make your own mods. So let's get right into the stuff that you need to do. So to start modding, we're gonna need uh, we're going to need to do a, th a few things first because, as you can see here, I have a, a couple shortcuts that I basically use all the time for modding everything. And it's also useful when you're installing mods to have them. So, so we're going to go into my computer here. We're going to go C, Program Files 86, scroll down until you see Steam. Then you want to go Steam Apps, go to Common, and... Scrap Mechanic. This folder here, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Scrap Mechanic, this is what you want to put as a shortcut on your desktop. So we're going to go, um, let's see, we're going to go back up one so that we can right click on the Scrap Mechanic folder and then we want to go down to Send To, Desktop, Create Shortcut. There it is, our Scrap Mechanic shortcut. So. Now we don't have to uh, go searching through our folders and files anymore. We just click the shortcut and we're here to Scrap Mechanic. Now this folder contains all of the game files that you need to start modding. So we're going to go into Data. We want to go to Objects, Textures, and then Interactive because that's what the logic gate and timer are they are interactive parts so as soon as you find the ones for logic gate and the ones for timer you can copy those over to uh let's let's go ahead and make a new folder on the desktop and we're just going to call this mods so in the mods folder here uh we're gonna yeah, we'll just copy it right over. So now I have the logic gate textures. Now the timer. There it is. We copied over the logic and timer textures. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using GIMP. It's a photo editing program, very similar, similar to Photoshop, but it's free. So this is going to be a good solution for everyone that does not have Photoshop, or if you do have Photoshop, a lot of the things in this program are very similar to photo Photoshop, so it's going to be more or less the same thing that you're going to be doing. So if we go ahead and start up GIMP, we basically have three windows here. Here's all your tools that you're going to need. Here's the main window where you're going to have your picture. And here are the, the layers window where you can manage all the different layers that make up the, the texture image. We're going to be working with just the logic gate underscore diff. So we just load that into GIMP. And here we see a logic gate all unfolded and spread all over the image. So the first thing that I'm going to do because I like to do it out of habit, is duplicate the layer that I'm working on. So I always have a backup of the original, and it's always going to be down here at the bottom. So in this new layer, I can do anything that I want, and I always have a backup for safety. So as you can see in this image, there is a blue part. That's the part that stays blue no matter how much we paint it. So real quick right now, I'm going to show you how painting works in the game. When you paint something, 
it's a lot like having a layer underneath this diff texture. So say we pick a color like red, and we paint that layer underneath the texture, you can see only parts of the logic gate are painted. So what we want to do is actually change this blue section that represents when the logic gate is active. We want to change that so that it actually shows the color underneath the layer. So to change this section so that it is paintable, let's, uh, let's zoom in real quick right here. So we can actually see where the section starts and where it stops. And we're going to select just the pixels that we need to. in order to make it transparent. Just gonna go all the way across. There we go. Cut out that section, start a new layer on top, paste it back into the section, now, whenever you paste something in GIMP, it's not, it's not permanent immediately because it can let you move it around in case you want to position it. But it's already in the position that we need it to be. So this floating selection, this pasted layer, we need to anchor it down into this new layer that we just made. So we go ahead and right click, anchor layer, and there we go. We now have it on its own layer so we can manipulate it however we want to. It's going to be a lot more useful for us. To actually have it on its own layer. In this layer, we can actually change the opacity as much as we want, but it still has that blue with it. So let's get rid of that. If we go to colors, oh wait, we want to we want to make sure we're on the layer that we want to edit. So we go to colors, hue and saturation, and we want to lower down the saturation all the way. So it's just uh, black and white. There's no color in it whatsoever. Then we click OK. Still in the same layer, I'm going to go down to Colors, Color to Alpha, and I'm going to choose White. It's already at White. Basically, this is going to change all of the white values in the layer to be transparent. So as you can see, the Logigate symbols are actually completely transparent, so whatever color that we put underneath, it's going to be that color exactly. And the screen of the logic gate itself is going to be a little bit darker so that whenever we see the active logic gate, it's going to show the color that we paint with a bright symbol of what the gate is. So just like that, we're pretty much done. So we want to disable all the other layers that we don't need, just the ones that we need. We're going to go ahead and go file. There might be an option here to overwrite the existing file that we're editing, which should be in our mods folder. So that should be perfectly safe to do because we're not actually changing the game copy. We're doing our working copy in the mods folder here. So we're going to go, go ahead and overwrite that. We're also going to save. So when you save a file uh, in GIMP, it's going to be this weird extension .xcf. That's just the extension that GIMP uses for its files. And this is what's going to allow us to come back into this with all of our layer information whenever we want to make changes. So we go ahead and save that, close, minimize GIMP because it, uh, it stays open, but you just minimize it. We'll use it later. And if we see here on the folder here, here is our GIMP image. We can go ahead and open it again and you see all of our layers are right in there again for us to work with. If we look at the logigate diff dot TGA, that's the game file extension, we can see our new texture. What I'm going to do real quick is make a backup. Inside this backup folder, I'm just going to 
quickly copy all of the same files that I did before just in case I mess up something horribly. So I can always revert back to what the game should be. So now that I have the edited Logigate texture, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that right into the game folder where all the textures are. Copy here, replace, and that's that. So now if we go back into the game, and we load our game that, uh, load the game that had our logic gates and timers. So as you can see in game, the logic gates light up whatever color that we paint them. If we want them pink, they can be pink. If we want them green, red, or blue, they can be any color that we paint them to be. But this looks a little bit dark. So to fix that, say we want it to, to be much brighter. That's super easy to fix. We just get out of the game. Go back into our GIMP file. Go to this layer with uh, our logic gate on screen. And we want to reduce the opacity, uh, maybe 50%. So we still want to actually make out what the gate actually is, but we want it just to be a lot brighter when it shows the color. See the difference if it's uh, at 100% or 50? So this is the texture that we want. We're going to just quickly save and export as. When we export, it's going to try and autocomplete for us, which is a good thing, but it's using the wrong extension .png. To fix that, you can just change to .tga or find the uh, texture that you want to replace here in the folder. Click it and it will try and replace it. Click export click replace just uh, you know th this window is not really important right now just click export and that's it you're done so now you have the new texture your new dot TGA we're gonna go back into the game after copying it of course go back into the game to see our progress All right, and uh, I'm not sure if it actually updated the texture. It still looks a little bit dark, especially this white over here. It still looks a little bit too gray for my taste, but I know that we changed the texture image, so this happens sometimes. So to make sure that the changes that we made actually take effect, we need to go back into our scrap mechanic folder here and we're going to go into the cache folder and we're going to delete everything inside the cache folder this forces the game to actually check to see if there are any new changes with the textures so that when we load the game up again it will take a little bit longer than normal but that's just because it's making all of those checks to make sure that all the textures and all the changes that we make are going to be implemented into the game a few moments later. All right, now that we're back in the game, we can see that our new textures are finally applied. And you can see this white is actually so bright, we can't even depict what the gate is. I mean, we can barely see it for some of the other gates, but that's how you make it much brighter and Usually if you're working on a mod and uh, you try something and it just doesn't update, usually the problem is just the cache folder and you just have to, you know, clear the cache, try again, and there you go. So the logic gates are painted, but what about the timer? Well, it's uh, a very similar process. Let's just go ahead and exit the game now and try that. So we still have our GIMP open here 
with uh, oh, let's just close that and now we want to op open the interactive timer diff texture so this like the uh, like the logic gate immediately I'm just gonna duplicate the the layer and turn off the original layer this is just gonna be our backup in case we make any mistakes we're gonna start a new layer to show you what it's like when you paint the logic gate and as you can see the logic gate is paintable but not in this top section here which if you look closely it's uh, everything that the logic gate needs to actually display the timer so here we're gonna go into this layer this time we're gonna try something a little bit different we're gonna be doing select by color tool so this means that anything any color that we click on it's gonna select the same color in the entire image so we go ahead and select that blue I'm gonna zoom in here just to see what we're selecting delete all the selected colors and then select none so we can see better and immediately you can see that um, if we were to paint the logic gate all of those bars would light up but there are still those bluish lines in between that's uh, not not very pretty so we're gonna go ahead and select by color and we're gonna select those darker parts as well and just delete them just delete them there we go now we go to select none so we can see a little bit better and we can tell right away there are no lines it's completely transparent and if we paint it it's going to be very very bright so let's go ahead and save this and test it out overwrite to interactive timer diff .tga. that's the file we want to overwrite we're just going to save this project so that we can come back to it later the .xcf save okay so let's just uh, close this for now minimize GIMP we're gonna go back into data objects textures interactive and we want to copy over our timer diff replace and just for good measure we're gonna go back and delete our cache folder clearing the cache folder will make sure that the texture takes effect so let's go back into the game and see our new texture eventually there we go and right away we can see there's a bright green logic gate I mean timer so let's go ahead and paint them some other colors let's see we want a red one we want a white one maybe a dark blue one darker blue yeah and uh, purple And just like that, you can have paintable objects in the game that aren't normally paintable. So this concludes the modding tutorial for today. I hope you guys learned something new, and if you like this series and you want to see more of it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. I want to thank everybody for supporting this channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye